Uh, good morning. Today I'm going to show you how Artworks ODB to Gerber program works. We're going to convert a fairly demanding ODB++ file that you see there. We're going to produce four Gerber files from it and we're going to understand what the limitations and constraints are. So we'll start by opening the ODB file. We'll time that. All right, it took three seconds approximately to scan the file and to report to the user the steps and the layers. So we're going to produce the panel, which is the largest. There's a unit circuit, then an array of units, and then a number of strips into the panel. And the layers that we're going to process are the solder mask, two signal layers, and the bottom solder mask. So we'll be doing four layers. As far as our settings go, this is where our, our working directory is going to be. Okay, we're not going to explode the symbols. We're going to use a chord error of one tenth of a mil. This is a pretty fine geometry. It has line widths in the order of 65 microns and gaps in the order of 25 microns. So we're using a chord error of 2.5 microns. We're using four threads because we have a computer with four threads. We'll start our clock. So one of the first steps the program has to do is to uh, read all of those aperture macros. This particular ODB file seems to have about 250 aperture macros or symbols and those are like little mini programs that actually help you draw the aperture. So those have to be interpreted and converted into polygons. All right, we're done. So we were able to create four layers in a total of 40 seconds, including the time to load and scan the file. And you can see that the layer one and layer two are quite large. They're 18 megabytes and 11.7. Those are the two metallization layers, and the solder masks are considerably smaller, especially the bottom solder mask. All right, let's have a look at this layer one to see what we have in the Gerber file. I've opened layer one in Artworks Gerber Viewer and zoomed into the lower left corner. And you can see that there's a cir fairly complex circuit that's been repeated quite a few times. And then there's these thieving, which are in place to maintain the density of the board. These actually are different. Each little panel is uh, not the same. And if you zoom in carefully and look at the edges, you'll see that in each case it's slightly different due to some, probably some shifts. Those become part of the frame. Uh, do the bars and these bars, and it's only the circuits that are stepped. If we analyze this circuit, we'll see that AMS is our symbol, and if we find all in the current document, we see there's actually 252 hits. So you see there's quite a lot of uh, symbols in this particular file. If I search for occurrences of LPD, I see that there's 87 times LPD has been used. This means layer polarity dark and it's usually used to restore the layer polarity to dark after a LPC command. This implies that this actually has many, many, many levels of paint and scratch, which makes it very demanding for a rasterizer. And if we search for SR, we see that there's 24 instances of SR, and I think about half of them, actually there's not that many, but you see that there's a lot of 6 by 22 arrays. So this represents the strip. Each one of these strips is placed like that. And so even though this file is 18 megabytes, it's actually highly compacted because the great majority of the data is written as, uh, as strips. To summarize, one can take an extremely demanding ODB++ file and generate as many layers as you want, output them in Gerber. Step and repeat will be used to minimize the file size. It all happens in, in less than a minute.